हाय शुभंजन स्टार्ट ना यस सो कैन यू जस्ट से हाउ आर यू एंड हाउ वाज योर एग्जाम इन फ्रेंच uh in the psa part uh, it was not at all satisfactory but in psb it was good Okay. okay fine so let us start with uh, inference portion okay. um you know about bivariate normal distribution right okay uh, and another thing can you just share some notepad or like uh no in i your am not having the tab uh, i am having a board at my back oh, and copying in front of me that is fine so can you just write down what i am telling you that would be fine in the board or in the copy what when uh, wherever uh, you are okay. comfortable okay so uh, suppose uh, you are given uh, yeah you have to show it to us so okay i think the board is a bit far away from your camera can you please bring it uh, a bit that is a problem is it now visible a bit closer ah uh, yeah yeah okay fine so okay i mean your font has to be a little bigger yeah please write a big big characters yeah. okay. okay so you are given uh, two random variables x and y and both are independent bivariate normal i mean they sorry both are independent what is it x comma y follows bivariate normal 0 0 1 1 row my mistake sorry yeah okay so can you just give me a unbiased estimator of row you know unbiasedness right so Uh, is it a sample or only this quantity? Yeah, you can take sample in many, uh, or uh, just uh, take one one. Don't need to take in many, based upon one sample. X Y. Okay, can you prove it? Yeah. yeah okay fine okay uh next question is uh, is x square y square is also unbiased for row square x square plus square yeah is it unbiased for row square yeah can you prove it Yeah, I may try. Yeah, yeah, just try. Just clear the board and do the next part.
Yeah, okay, so what do you get? I think I'm doing some mistake here. Why? Why well, I mean, why are you thinking I'm doing mistake? I mean, though, what is the expectation you're getting? It is uh, 2 rho square plus 1. Yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess uh, it will not be an x square y square will not be an unbiased estimator of rho. Rather, yeah. correlation between right. x square y square will be rho square. Okay. Okay, then show that the correlation will be. I mean, yeah, this is true that the, it is not unbiased, right? It is evident from the derivation. Yes. So. So, may I rub Just the find it. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, grab the board and find the correlation. Yeah, okay, fine, that is okay. Uh, okay, so unbiasedness done. Achha, uh, you know about consistency? Yes. Uh, what uh, What is that? I mean, what is consistency? And a, a sequence of estimator Tn is said to be consistent uh, for a parametric function xi theta if Tn yeah. converges in probability to xi theta. Okay, what is meant by convergence in probability? You just wrap the board and just write the what you need to check to prove convergence in probability. Yeah, yeah, okay. So can you suppose uh, we were doing, uh, working with one sample, now you are given in many uh, ran uh, random, many, in many samples with each following bivariate normal, can you show that summation xi, yi by n is consistent for rho? Uh, can you please repeat the estimator? Summation xi yi by n. Summation running from i equals to 1 to n.
can you say suhanju na which method uh, you are i am applying up to now uh, expectation tn uh, is rho so right. uh, n is not it is not dependent on actually n and variance yeah. of the tn to zero is intending to infinity so with sufficiency condition we can say that tn converges in probability to uh, rho yeah okay okay fine so this is not a necessary right right if i yeah. say expectation goes to something and variance goes to zero then i can ensure i mean Mm, I cannot ensure the other way down, right? Yes. Like if goes to uh, in probability, then this will happen. I can't ensure that, right? Yes. This is true. Okay. Okay. Fine. Can you? Uh, or uh, sorry, do you know any other mode of convergence? This is convergence in probability. Do you know? Uh yes. Uh, convergence in distribution. Yeah. Okay. So, can you just write down the criteria that when we say, suppose, let's say, any random variable x n converges in distribution to another random variable x? Yes. Uh, x n convergence uh, in distribution to x if uh, yeah if n x converges. If if n x tends to f x as n tending to infinity. Yeah. Or all x belongs to C F, and uh, if n x is the C D F of x n, and f x is C D F of x, and C F is basically the continuity point of x. Yeah. Right. Good. So, um, what do you think? We have seen that uh, summation x i y i by n converges in probability to rho. Does that also converges in distribution to rho? I mean, distribution to not rho. Basically, in distribution to the uh non uh, non i mean degenerated random variable which is degenerated at row do you think that the distribution of summation xi yi by n converges in the distribution to that x where x is degenerated at row oh, because it's are getting my not, question uh yeah but uh, no it it is not because for degenerated random variable we are having variance zero but uh, in that case variance is not equal to zero okay do you know any uh, relation between these two things convergence in probability and convergence in distribution like uh, you may not know but have you ever come across with this yeah things uh, like when one happens then other happens or at the other way around anything like that convergence in uh, probability convergence in distribution actually implies convergence in probability but the converse may not be true is that so or the other way around i think uh, i mean uh, do you know any kind of proof for that or you have just no uh, i can't i can't recall okay, okay. it okay okay fine that is okay that is okay you will learn this in your masters basically actually the other way around is true convergence in probability implies convergence in distributions okay that is okay and uh, now let us uh, come to some testing problems okay, okay. so just write down just uh, clear the board suppose i uh, write down uh, uh, you have uh, say two uh, independent samples okay so in one in sorry population in one population there are 5000 many peoples in another population there are maybe 4000 peoples okay so we want to uh, just listen first the question okay so we want to uh, know uh, just try to see the effect of pre notification letters uh, on the response to a survey okay 
so for that those 5000 people were sent a notification letter before sending the actual survey form and those 4000 people were directly sent the survey form without sending any kind of pre notification letter and we observed that among those 5000 people say 2000 people have answered or responded to the survey just write down do you write down it so among those 5000 people 2000 people have responded to the survey and among those 4000 people say 3000 people have responded to the survey okay so we want to test and you followed that right those 5000 people were sent a noti pre notification letter about the survey and those 4000 were directly sent the survey form so now i want to test that whether there is any effect of those pre notification letters on the response to the survey can you just formulate in a null hypothesis or any setup to test this thing now can we proceed you can just share like how are you trying to which we way can take, uh, number of the people responded to the survey yeah if it uh, goes beyond the cut off level say c then uh, we can formulate a test like that yeah that is okay so i mean in any general hypothesis testing problem what we uh, how we start to start to how what things we whatever first we uh, first we draw sample from the population then we formulate the testing problem and decide the critical region of the test yeah okay so do you want to assume any kind of distribution in that case or uh, let like we all start with some random variable right yes i think so what uh, is in your mind like what you want to take as your random variable or as your parameter of interest interest so oh, yeah, here we are interested in parametric inference or not uh as we are interested in uh, knowing the effect of the pre notification on the number of the uh, effect of the pre notification on the number of the responses so i guess uh, normal yeah. may not be a good assumption because it may take negative values so i guess we can proceed with any non negative random variable now exactly i am not i am unable to recall the distribution right now which will be better for you okay hmm. can you proceed with the binomial distribution yeah so if you can just formulate the variables and the test then proceed just uh, write what you are thinking in binomial i mean what will be your parameter of interest what we will try to see mean mean response that is mean number of response say p if it is binomial in p then we will have to test for p okay uh, write down the thing the your null hypothesis
so we are uh, taking a cut off p not that uh, if p goes beyond p not then we will say that uh, p notification effect uh, pre there is a effect of p notification and if p is less than p not then there will be no so you only want to use the first data like 5000 and 2000 you don't want to use the second data among 4000 3000 has been responded to Oh, I mean, what is your P here? I think this may be correct. P1 greater than P2 and P1 less than P2. If what is now, your uh, P1 and P2? Uh, if uh, we uh, take uh, number of the people responded, uh, then it will be b binomial, uh, say, 5000 comma P1. And P1 is the probability of respondents and uh, P2 is probability of respondents for population 2. Okay, so P1 is for those who have been sent a pre notification letter and P2 for those yeah. who haven't. Right. So, uh, uh, you have taken your H0 as P1 greater than P2. Yeah. Okay. So, just formulate the test. What will be your test statistic? What will be the distribution of your test statistic under H0? And so on and so forth, what we da do generally, the critical point. And those populations are independent, right? Yeah. You are. Hmm. Okay. I mean, my question will be that uh, using this null hypothesis, will you be able to get a comfortable distribution of the test statistic under H0? I no. mean, will it be a comfortable work? Yeah. No, no, no. Because so, the distribution of X1, uh, X bar minus Y bar will be very complicated. So in that case, we may use the uh, last sample distribution. That is X bar minus Y bar minus its expectation divided by root under its variance. And uh, asymptotically, we can reject or accept the H node. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Okay. So can you just uh, thought, uh, think of any simpler hypothesis? I mean, what is your hypothesis here? Is that simple or composite? Uh, it is composite. Okay. So do, uh, do we do that naturally? We try to keep the things simple, right? Under H naught. Yes. So can you modify that? Like under H naught, what will be enough to take as an uh, and that's why you can also modify H one also. Uh Say I have what? asked for uh, just like say whether there is any effect on yeah. So we can uh, test H0 as P1 minus P2 greater than some C and here P1 minus P2 less than some C. And Can't we C go with P1 equals to P2 under H0? Uh, P1 equal to P2 under H0? Uh, yeah. Why why are you uh, complexing all the things? Just think simpler uh, in simple way, right? We yes. do that all as those things. We do not take such things under H naught. So yes. uh, yeah, so P one equals to P two will be okay. And under H one, we we uh, we will uh, as part of our claim, we'll check whether P one is greater than P two, right? Yeah. Because our claim was, uh, I think, I mean, we want to get the response much more when we send a pre-notification letter than we when we not send right yeah yeah so that will be enough okay
Okay, so now can you just give me the test statistic and the distribution and H naught, etc. Okay, just the taste statistics write down the taste statistics. Taste statistics as previous x1 bar minus x2 bar. Okay, and the distribution will you be able to? No, large sample asymptotic. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, and can you give me any kind of uh, confidence interval for the difference between these two? Parameters like difference of P1 minus uh, P1 and P2. Oh, uh, yes. So maybe uh, you can uh, tell me the procedure. How will you proceed? Yes. Uh, suppose uh, I am doing a large sample test based on our test statistics, say T. So under H0 as intending to infinity, it will go to normal 0, 1. So uh, we, can, mm -hmm. uh, we can do it like this that. Probability it is the uh, minus tau alpha by two less than equal to uh less than equal to the value of the test statistics less than equal to tau alpha by two it will be one minus alpha. Now this distribution uh of course in t it will involve p one minus p two so by uh, changing the side we can get a confidence uh hundred into one minus alpha percent confidence interval for p one minus p two. Okay. And uh, uh, by stating large sample, what kind of results are you uh, using? Central limit theorem. Okay, just can you tell me what is that? I mean, what uh, in which way you are using here central limit? Like what will go to in which distribution? Means uh, in context of this problem. Yes, yes. Uh, if I am taking uh, x size uh, for population one, that is the number of the respondent for population one, and uh, hmm. yi for number of the respondent for population two, which will be following okay. by both the will be following binomial. First one is binomial five thousand comma p one. Second one will be binomial five thousand comma uh, four thousand comma p two. Then we can use uh, x bar minus y bar minus expectation of the x bar minus y bar divided by uh, root okay. under variance of the x bar minus y bar, which will tend to uh, in mm -hmm. distribution normal 0, 1 as uh, intending to infinity. Means here n is actually okay. given 5000 and 4000. So yeah, we may take it as large. Okay. Uh, okay. So you are using that. Uh, can we? Uh, uh, do you know any kind of other things theorem or any kind of other pros procedure to which we generally use in hypothesis testing? Uh, process means I'm any kind of theorem lemma. Anything? Do you know? Uh, yes, uh, in uh, MP test, we use MP lemma for MP test and UMP test. Okay, 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 just uh, you wrap the board. Just, this is the final problem, write down. Write down x1, x2 up to xn, iid random variables. Uh, they follows exponential with mean theta. IID exponential mean theta. Yeah. Now just find the MP test for testing H naught. Theta equals to two versus H one theta equals to one.
this will be the critical region yeah fine okay uh so will that be uh, also the uniformly most powerful test uh for uniformly most powerful test uh, i guess uh, each one uh, we have to consider some exact value then say theta not and we have to calculate the lambda x curl and uh, we have to check yeah. its monotonic property and if it is uh, actually have to find phi x curl if it is actually independent yeah. of theta not then it will be actually a ump test for testing h not against h1 yeah right that, that means uh, it can't depend on the alternative right i mean the yeah. exact value which were okay yeah, yeah. good uh, now uh, you have given the region as summation x greater than c Uh, suppose i tell you that uh, i am interested in considering the region as x order n is greater than c i will reject h not if x order n is greater than c that may not okay. be meaningful i am not saying it will be meaningful so okay. uh, now i will ask you which test i mean which test will you uh, rely more on which test will you rely upon in in that where you have given the choice we uh, when we will reject h not for summation x i greater than c or you will reject uh, it is actually less than x order n is greater than c it will be less and, than uh, that is okay 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 uh, x, summation x is less than c so how will you choose uh, which test to use as mp test is most powerful uh, for yeah. say uh, actually the cut off point will be determined by the condition of the size or level now uh, yeah. uh, as mp test is the most powerful test uh, among all the uh, size yeah. alpha test so its power will be yeah. i guess back more than that of the other critical region that yeah. you have mentioned so uh, efficiency of the yeah. test will be better so i will prefer with this test yeah. okay so and what do you mean by power of the test power of the test is probability of uh, probability of h1 rejecting uh, probability under h1 value of the test statistic falling in the critical region it is actually uh, probability of rejecting a false null definition wise and mathematically it is probability under h1 x curl belong to omega where x curl will be the test statistic and omega will be the critical region Okay, so can you find the uh, power for this test? This test. Yes. Oh.
just write uh, what you have to integrate. You don't need to yep. do the, all the calculations. Yes, uh, we have to integrate uh, 0 to C, then this PDF. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. Okay, Rupanjan, you can continue. I'm done. Hmm. Okay, so uh, just drop the board. Yeah, so I'm giving you a oh, system of linear equations. Yeah, please. Water. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I am giving a system of linear equations, right? Just write linear. it down. Yeah, okay. just write it down. X plus Y plus Z. Repeat equals, one. Yeah, X plus Y plus Z. Yeah. Equal to six. 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 Okay, then x plus 2y plus 3z. Equal to 3. Equals to 10. And x plus 2y plus lambda z. Equals to mu. Okay. So yeah. x plus y plus z is 6. x plus 2y plus 3z is 10. Yeah. And x plus y plus lambda z is mu. Yeah. Okay. So just tell me for which values of lambda and mu it has one yeah. solution and no solution. One solution and no solution, right? Yeah. Okay, so can you tell me what you have written? Uh, for no solution, rank of A augmented B curl will be uh, rank of A plus 1. And for uh, one solution, rank of A augmented B curl equal to rank of A equal to 3. Yeah, yeah so I want the values of lambda and mean. Uh, yes, I am trying to find it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one thing, can you just explain why this rank of A augmented B that you have written? Yeah. I mean, what's the basic concept of that? When you uh, ensure that I, there is a solution? Yes, uh, see, but here B curl is 6, 10 mu, and A will be this uh, coefficient matrix. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if I am augmenting this B curl into A, and if mm -hmm. B curl uh, belongs to the column space of A, then mm -hmm. uh, B curl can be uh, written as linear combination of them, but the mm -hmm. overall number of the column vectors remains same. So rank of A augmented B curl equal to rank of A 
that ensures that there will be a solution. And if if B curl doesn't belongs to the column space of A, then there mm -hmm. it will be adding one extra uh, number of the independent column vectors. In that case, it will be ranked A plus one. And uh, in that case, it will ensure that the system will be inconsistent. Okay. So, and then that rank of a augmented B equals rank of A equals three. So uh, this is the uh, condition for the consistency part, the first equality. And the next equality is the uh, part for the unique solution. Unique solution, why? Why, I mean, why if you rank that equals three ensures that there is a new next solution. Uh, because uh, rank, uh, we can, uh, because if rank A is less than C, uh, less than three, we can show that it, uh, if the system is consistent and rank A is less than three, there was a proof that uh, we can show it, it have infinitely many solutions. So yeah, for that's example, it for less than three. I am asking yeah. what is for equals to three. The exact derivation I am unable to recall. No, no, I'm not going to exact derivation. I just want the idea. Just tell me the idea. Okay, so is there any connection between the the solution space of this x equals to b with the null space of a? Uh, null space of a and a x curl equal to b curl. No, but if a x curl equal to zero curl, then I guess. Okay, suppose you know that there is a solution x naught. Okay. Can you know yeah. the null space of A? Now, can you tell me uh, anything about the solution space of X equals B? I've given you one solution, X not say. Null space of A is actually equivalent to ortho complement space of the row space of A. Okay. Then. So what? I am unable to so, so null space of A is a subspace, right? Is that a subspace? Is that form space? Space? Yeah, yeah. So that's a subspace. This uh, is a solution space, X equals B. Is that a subspace? Uh, no. Why? By definition of subspace, we can prove that. Yeah, which uh, condition is not satisfying yet? Suppose the uh, A x curl, A x not curl equal to B curl. Hmm. Now, uh, say uh, there are two solutions, say x not curl and x1 curl. Now, if we do like that, then A x1 curl will be again B curl, but uh, now suppose there is uh, there are no such two solutions. Any other argument which no, we can prove which, the uh, actually the proof of the subspace. We can do it like that that if x not curl belongs to uh, the solution space and x one curl belongs to the solution space, we can we have to show that that x not curl plus x one curl also belongs to the solution space. Then it will be a subspace. But here the condition... Yeah, but that requires that uh, your system has at least two solutions. I'm not going to that. I'm saying that is there uh, something uh, say the null vector, right? Is that belongs to your 
স্পেস so basically what are you doing there i am i have first uh, reduced it to the echelon form then i am trying to find the conditioning on lambda and so mu. it is a row reduction right yeah yeah row reduction yeah so, and uh, then ultimately you claim that uh, after that row reduction that matrix you got the rank of that will be same to that the previous one right yeah rank uh, yeah so the rank of the matrix you started with will be the same with that you end up with yeah so why so why row reduction ensures that Okay, leave it. Just proceed with. there should be another step right in the row reduction the last two rows oh yes oh hmm. yeah now tell me what will be the values of lambda and mu for which say it has only one solution uh in case lambda becomes 3 and uh hmm in case uh, lambda equal to 3 and mu not equal to 10 in this case uh, rank of a augmented b curl will be 3 that is rank a equal to 2 plus 1 so in that case we will have no solution 
Okay, so in that case, you have no solution, right? When lambda yeah. equals three and mu not equal to ten. Yeah. And when only one solution. Okay. Uh. In that case, I guess uh, lambda not equal to three and mu not equal to ten. In that case, rank of a augmented vehicle is also three. Rank a is also three, and it is equal to three. Okay, so when uh, what happens if mu equals to ten? Mu equal to ten. Yeah, so you have stated that lambda not equal to three and mu not equal to ten, right? Yeah. So what is the problem with mu equal to ten? Lambda not equal to three is fine, but is it required to mu not equal to ten? Uh, I guess it's not three. necessary. Yeah, so lambda not equal to three is sufficient, right? Uh, I think so because yeah, because it will also contribute to this part. Lambda not equal to three means it is non-zero and it will contribute to the part of rank of a augmented vehicle. So I guess it is sufficient. So lambda not equal to three. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So fine and. Uh, there was a question in your PSP, right, from linear. Yeah. Right. Can you uh, remember that question? Yeah, of course. So what was that? Some orthogonal matrix related, right? Yeah, AX it, was, equals uh, B. A, it was given a solution system that A is equal to B card and mm -hmm. A was M not equal to N such that A transpose A is I N. They have, uh, we have to show that uh, the system have at most one solution. So you have done that problem or not? Yes, I have done that problem, but there I have made a small mistake. Actually, it was not an orthogonal matrix. I have shown that to orthogonal matrix, that rank of the matrix A will be in, but it will not be through that concept. It will be rank of A transpose A equal to rank I in, which will implies rank K equal to N. So in that case, if B call belongs to the column space of A, it will uh, have one solution. And uh, if B call doesn't belong to the column space of A, it will have no solution. Thus, the system may have at most one solution. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool stuff. No, okay. Good morning. And uh, one thing, just uh, as an advice, just go through the basic concepts of this system of linear equation. And uh, this, uh, you have used the theorem, right? That rank of A augmented B equals rank of A. Yeah. So just, just go through the proofs of these theorems. Okay, a little bit, if time permits. Okay, but can I uh, tell one thing? Yeah. That I have uh, I've seen a book of uh, Boon Roy and uh, I guess there was a proof that uh, actually uh, rank, uh, it is, we know that rank uh, remains unchanged by pre or post multiplication by a non-singular matrix. So we can, uh, the process in we are doing the row reduction, we can multi post or pre multiply the matrix with some uh, say uh, non singular matrix we can set the matrix mm. as such uh, mm. and we can show that the form actually is coming by pre multiplication or the post multiplication uh, of the non singular matrix will be same as that of our row reduction so in yeah. such we can claim that uh, they will be equal yeah that's fine uh, but still i'm um, just uh, just to go through the basic 
uh, of those null space, the entire relation between the row space and null space and the solution space of a system of linear equation with that of that the null space of that matrix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Uh, okay, Swanjun, you uh, yes. have done a course on probability, right? Yeah. So you have learned random variables and things like that? Yeah. Okay, so write a question. Uh, suppose you have a, a random sample, uh, X, following a Cauchy distribution. Random sample uh, Cauchy? Random sample, not not random sample, just a random variable x following uh, uh, Cauchy, uh, standard Cauchy. So can you find the expectation of 1 by 1 plus x? Nick, you can uh, uh, share with us how you are trying to proceed. I am not sure that uh, this will actually exist or not. So I first want to check its existence. Okay. How will you check its existence? By taking expectation mod of this quantity. If it is finite, then it will... Okay, exist. let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. If uh, x follows a Cauchy zero one, what does one by x follow? Cauchy zero one. Okay, so if we replace x by one by x, then that expectation will remain same, right? Yeah. So replace it. So it will not exist. Why? Because expectation x doesn't exist. I am telling you to replace x by 1 by x, not the whole thing 1 by 1 plus x. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. 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 Uh, so we you have obtained that expectation one by one plus x equals to half, right? Yeah. And now clear of the board. Okay. So uh now do you know that if there are two uh, normal random variables x1 x2 iid standard normal write down x1 x2 iid standard normal yeah uh so uh, then x1 by x2 follows what Standard Cauchy. Standard Cauchy, write down. Okay. So then uh, the expectation I wanted you to find out if you replace x by x1 by x2, where x1, x2 are IID normal 0, 1, they will be same. Like expectation 1 by 1 plus x equals to expectation 1 by 1 plus x1 by x2. Okay. And 
we already uh, have shown that expectation 1 by 1 plus x equals to expectation x by 1 plus x. Yeah. Then that will give you what? Uh, repeat once. Then if you find out expectation x by 1 by x by 1 plus x, write down expectation yeah. x by 1 plus x. Replace x by x1 plus x2. Yeah. Then what are you getting? It will also be half. Uh, no, 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 no. Then uh, you are getting like expectation x2 by x1 plus x2, right? Yeah. Then if you subtract these two, like expectation x2 by x1 plus x2 minus expectation x1 by x1 plus x2, it will give you zero. Expectation x1 minus x2 by x1 plus x2. Yeah. Like these two expectations are same as you have found out already. Expectation x, by, expectation x by x1 plus x and expectation 1 by 1 plus x. You have already yeah. shown that these two are same. So expectation yeah. x1 by x1 plus x2 and expectation x2 by x1 plus x2, these two are also same. Uh, yeah. Then expectation x1 minus x2 by x1 by x1 plus x2. This yeah. is equals to zero expectation. Yeah. Write down. Okay. Now can you find the distribution of x1 minus x2 and x1 plus x2? Where x1, x2 for the IIT normal 0, 1? Find the distribution of x1 minus x2 and x1 plus x2. x1 minus x2 and x1 plus x2 separately? Yeah, they will, uh, this will follow normal 0, 2 and this will also follow normal 0, 2. Can you write it now? Okay. So, and anything more you can say about this? Yeah, they will be independent. Okay. Then can you find the distribution of x1 minus x2 by x1 plus x2? Cauchy 01. Cauchy 01. Now expectation of a Cauchy 01 variable is? Not different. Then why are you getting 0? There is some mistake, right? Somewhere in some step. Yes, uh, actually, uh expectation x it will be it, this can be broken into expectation x1 minus x2 into expectation 1 by x1 plus x2 now uh, expectation 1 by no, x2 no, no. Plus in that by that argument you reach that expectation x1 minus x2 by x1 plus x2 this is equal to 0 yeah what was wrong in that argument this will not exist which one will not exist? This expectation. Uh, why? Because uh, expectation x1 plus No, no, no. Suppose, suppose, suppose I have given you that argument. Expectation 1 by x, 1 by 1 plus x equals to expectation x1 by x1 plus x2. And expectation x by 1 plus x equals to expectation x2 by x1 plus x2. Now, as x follows Cauchy 0, 1, then uh, 1 by x follows Cauchy 0, 1 also. So expectation uh, x by 1 plus x equals to expectation 1 by 1 plus x. So ex expectation x1 by x1 plus x2 and expectation x2 by x1 plus x2, these are same. <laughs> then we can differentiate, yeah, we just take the difference and it will come to 0. In this whole argument, where have I made a mistake? Like, 
can you point out any uh, mistake here no i am actually not getting it okay clear the board Okay. Um, now, suppose x1, x2 are two random variables. Independent? Not necessarily. Just two random variables. What can you tell about the expectation of x1 plus x2? Provided they exist, right? Yeah. So now can you find any fallacy in that argument? Oh, uh, it, in that case, uh, it was uh, x1 by x1 plus x2. And plus it was minus there. Uh, it was x2 by x1 plus x2 equal to, I have broken them into expectation x1. Minus expectation x2, which was coming zero, but this part doesn't exist. This part doesn't exist, or the individual terms doesn't exist. Expectation individual term it was existing that is, expectation x1 by x1 plus x2 and x2 by x1 plus x2. They were it was okay. So I write down expectation x1 by x1 plus x2. Here, x1, x2 follows independently, normal 0, 1, right? Normal 0, 1. Mm, okay. So, you are saying that the expectation exists. How? Okay. Suppose you divide uh, the numerator and denominator by x1. Yeah. Then it will be... Can you divide the numerator and denominator by x1? Like I'm not sure of that. You can't always divide the numerator and denominator of a fraction by any quantity, right? Like if it becomes zero, then it will be a slight of a problem. Yeah. Right. So can we divide it here? I guess we can because uh, they are continuous random variables. They can't take exact value zero. So. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now uh, divide both uh, numerator and denominator by x1. So we get x1 by 1 plus x, right? Where x follows Cauchy. Normal. Yeah. Yes. Standard Cauchy. Okay. Yeah. If x follows standard Cauchy, then what does 1 plus x follow? 1 plus x. Yeah. Oh. Can you just find out what does 1 plus x follow? Yeah, by transformation, we can find it. Transformation, what, what? What is actually coming to your mind? Like, if, like, uh, Cauchy has two parameters, right? I guess it will make Cauchy 1, 1, comma 1. Cauchy 1, comma 1, okay. Then 1 plus x follow Cauchy 1, comma 1. Write down, write down. Follow Cauchy 1 comma 1. Okay. Yeah. Now, now can you uh, can you just tell me when expectation of a Cauchy distribution exists? If expectation x to the power expectation x to the power exists if mod are less than 1. 
कैन यू रिपीट वंस एक्सपेक्टेशन एक्स टू दी पावर आर विल एग्जिस्ट इफ मॉड आर लेस देन वन मॉड आर लेस देन वन सो व्हाट इज द मॉड व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ आर हियर हियर आर इज माइनस वन सो इट विल नॉट एक्सिस्ट exactly so can you now find out the problem where you were making uh, yeah this individual expectation doesn't exist okay so if expectation x1 plus x2 equals to expectation x1 plus expectation x2 if and only if if, uh, if and only if not provided that they exist right like they have to yes. exist for this identity to hold yes now can you give me an example where uh, x1 x2 expectation x1 expectation x2 do not exist but uh, expectation x1 plus x2 exist are you getting my question expect i need an example where expectation x1 and expectation x2 do not exist but expectation x1 plus x2 exist for example no but this will i guess then expectation x1 plus x2 will also not exist uh, uh, one second in that case i i guess expectation x1 plus x2 will also not exist okay let then i am giving you an example suppose x follows cosh 01 yeah yeah x1 equals to x with yeah. probability 1 yeah and x2 equals to minus x then what is x1 plus x2 degenerated at zero zero it probability one right yeah so expectation exists yeah and uh, does expectation x1 and expectation x2 exist no then are you getting an example yeah ओके ओके आई एम डन ओके ऑडरी जे लुकंजन या ओके या सो गुड लक या गुड लक फॉर योर इंटरव्यू एंड या थैंक यू एनी फॉर फाइनल सजेशंस फॉर मी दैट आई कैन इंप्रूव इन दिस डेज दे गो थ्रू दिस random variables portions and uh, beta about uh, hypothesis testing and things like that because uh, they ask they will ask about hypothesis estimation uh, with probability 1 so uh, you have to be a bit more clear that's it and uh, does they give uh, in uh, rupanjan das panel live so that uh, they are, they gave a question like uh, for a symmetric matrix uh, it has real eigen values to prove it and in such type of questions i have actually practiced from my honors copy and uh, some of the derivations i have done and i could have remembered they will not they will not tell you to derive the basically but... what happens when uh, they will ask you to solve some problems okay Yeah. So while solving that problem, you may use some properties. Okay, then they will say that uh, from where you got this property. Can you prove it? Okay. Okay. So in this way, <laughs> this question arises. Okay. Okay. But is it necessary <laughs> now, um, actually, to derive all the things that Do is? Do I mean? No, it's not required. All those things just. if time permits just uh, have a look on those things okay 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 sure. if focus on the basic concepts
इन्फ्लुएंस एज वेल एज इंट्रोलिटी ओके 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 थैंक यू या